Let us have a look at the AEC application. The AEC application you will find on the left hand side. Previously in CADI 15 the AEC application was situated in your 3D application. The AEC or Architectural Engineering and Construction has evolved in such a way that it actually is now an application on its own. This application can either be used to be either two dimensional tools or three dimensional tools. As you can see from the exercise in front of you, we've got a little two dimensional drawing which I'm going to draw in a three dimensional or AEC environment. Once you click on AEC and you click on walls, I want to add a wall. Once the wall dialog box opens, you will find going at the top to your different styles. At the bottom you will find saved presets and in your saved presets all the new Caddy 16 AEC wall styles are placed in there. The one that I'm indicating now tells you that it's an external wall with 10 plaster, 220 brick and 10 plaster on the other side. The one below that has 10 millimeter plaster on one side 220 brick and the one below that is just a 220 millimeter brick wall so you choose the relevant wall style that you want to use you click on load and it will just load it into your current list going back to wall parameters you choose the style that you want to draw with the wall height that you want the wall to be the origin and the type of wall either a curved or a straight wall once you click on OK, it will ask you to indicate the first point. So I'm just going to snap to the existing two-dimensional drawing at the bottom. Once you go back to the first point, you will see the external walls are complete. Using the same command, I can now choose a different wall style to be used. Same origin, the same type, etc. And I'm just going to draw an internal wall going from left to right and then one going down from the bottom to the top there as well. Once that's done, your walls are basically complete. Going to door, windows and openings. Uh, let's just add a couple of windows in there. The windows, once again, as with walls, you can choose different styles. Currently, I've, I'm going to use an awning, double awning style. The height of the window is 1.8 meters. The head height 2.12 and the width of the window itself. Once you click on OK, you indicate the wall uh, window position. Sorry. Once you indicate the window positions, it inserts those windows into the current AEC wall. The same you can do with your doors. Once again, choose a style, choose the height, the head height, the width that you want the door to be, the opening angle for the door. In other words, zero will be a door that is closed, 90 degrees will be fully open, so I'm just going to choose a swing angle of 60 degrees. Once you click on OK and you indicate the door position, it will draw the door for you, but in the command line it will prompt you to click to update hinge position. So anywhere in your drawing, if you just click, every time you click, the hinge position is updated, so you just click until you get the result that you require. You say option end and you move on to the next door. Do exactly the same there. Exactly the same there. And let's just do another door at the top here. And once you say option end, I'm now complete putting in windows and doors on ground floor. If I now go down to plan sections and elevation tools, I can change my cut plane height. As you can see currently my cut plane is at 1.4 meters height. If I change that to 3.5 meters height and I click on OK, you will see it doesn't cut through the AEC doors and windows anymore because it uh, cuts through at a different height above the existing ones that I've added. So once that's done, I can add some more windows in there. Let's for this sake just choose the same window. But I'm going to add 2720, which is uh, my floor to floor height, to my head height. Once you say OK and you indicate the window positions once again, you've got the windows in there.
and exactly the same you can do with your doors you add the floor to floor height and indicate the door positions once that's done we should basically have now a ground and first floor what we still need in there is a slab so if I go to floors slabs and railings I can add a slab in there the slab currently has a thickness of 170 millimeters the height which is the bottom of the slab from ground floor level say OK and you draw your slab going anti-clockwise where you want the slab to be once you're done you say option end which will create the slab view let's put a stair in there once I click on the stair command it will ask you what kind of stair do you like do you want a u-shaped multi-landing a spiral or a straight care straight stair which in this case I've got uh, the width of the stair itself the height which is the floor to floor height and the tread dimensions once you click on OK and you indicate the stair position caddy will place a stair for you once that stair is done you can put a railing in there from the stairs itself you indicate the stair and it should give you a railing on there the railing itself if you select the railing and you go to the context sensitive menu object properties it will give you some information regarding the railing as well as the anchor location currently the anchor location is on the center so if I change that to the left hand side of the stair with an offset of 75 millimeters from the edge and I click on OK you will find the stair just moved to the relevant side that I've indicated so on top of that we also need a, um, a roof so if I go to the roof commands once again the roof command will prompt you for the pitch the overhang the base height which is the wall plate height the profile I'm just going to indicate points the fascia height um, you can choose the thickness there once you say OK and you indicate the corners of a building like this once you say option end it places a roof for you now a roof can also be edited by changing either let's say the one side it says indicate roof segment to change so if I change the left hand side to a gable it changes to a gable and in the same breath I can change it back to a hip end again on top of that I'm also going to add some dormer windows if I click on dormer the roof type for the dormer you can choose to be gable flat hip mono pitched etc the height of the dormer itself the wall and the cheek width once you say OK it asks you to indicate the position on the outside of the, the wall itself so I indicate that position and that's the roof it should attach it to add another dormer in there position for center of front face so once again I indicate that position and I indicate the dormer door segment once that's done let's have a look at um, what we can do from this point onwards if I go back to plan sections and elevations from this AEC model that I've created I can create a horizontal section before I do that I can once again change the cut plane height to cut through at a height of 1.4 meters and when I do a horizontal section I can indicate two diagonal corners indicate a section position which will give me a section cutting through ground floor if I change my cut plane height to three and a half meters again and I do another horizontal section through the same AEC model and I indicate another new position you will see the next one it creates now cuts through the first floor and in exactly the same way you can create vertical sections if I create a vertical section cutting through my building going from that point to that point looking in that direction 
and I indicate the section position over there it will create the section for me and once again in the same way I can create another vertical section going through let's say over here looking in that direction and another section over there as you can see from the AEC tools I've used everything that I've done is basically done in a two-dimensional environment and there we've got an AEC model we've got a ground floor plan first floor plan two vertical sections and um, let's see what we can get from this point onwards everything that I've done as I've mentioned was done in a two-dimensional environment if I now go to my three-dimensional tools and I draw a plane at the bottom of the floor over there on the UCS let's just draw a plane over here somewhere it creates a plane now if you orbit your model around you will find that the model that you've created is actually created in three dimensions if I change my render mode to be flat shaded or fong shaded you'll see you've got a nice and neat basic model switching my perspective on will show that model for me in 3D once you've got that uh, in terms of creating a rendered image going to your 3D application clicking on view you can set your view environment choosing the north uh, position the north angle um, wherever you are situated in the world the position relevant or in, in, in relation to the world map itself but once you've got view and you've set up your materials correctly from this point onwards I can just choose to render that and you can render that to screen or to file I'm just going to do a full render to screen and let's click on render you will see from the tools that we've indicated we actually can use the AEC tools to either create two-dimensional working drawings for you or three-dimensional models either way AEC is very useful and powerful to use it will also prompt you if you want to save the image yes or no in this case I'm just not going to save it